And for me, I had probably had the weirdest response. And I looked at the movie and was like, I could do that. <laughs> hey. <laughs> What is going on? Welcome to the School Site Corner. We are here for another ETG session with my man, Kevin Urquhart. Kevin is an owner within this company called One Circle Films, and we're going to talk about what his role is and how he actually got there. Now, Kevin, I knew Kevin since I was back in middle school, and to see where he's at current day, my sister actually told me about, she was like, you know, Kevin's in actually production. He's doing production. I was like, wow, that's pretty cool because I've spoken to a lot of authors and people that do writing, and I haven't had someone on here that speaks about production. So you are my man for that. And let's have a conversation, man. All right. All right. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. So just real quickly, like I mentioned, I knew you in seventh grade or six middle middle school, sixth through eighth grade, and then we fell off towards the high school. But right, right. currently, what are you focused on when it comes to what you're producing within this company? Yeah, so with One Circle Films, we do a few things. We uh we've shot commercials, uh like golf commercials. We've shot um commercials for uh roofing clients. Uh, we do shoot weddings as well as we shoot films. Uh, we've had a short film recently, Ascension, that we just finished. Uh, still in post production. Look out for it. Uh, as well as we are working on a on a few projects, few features. Uh, we'd like to get out there in the near future. Uh, so I'm excited about some of the adventures we're going through and we're going to be producing and, and releasing to everybody. And I think it's going to be something people really want to see and check out. Okay. You mentioned that uh, short film, I'm not going to, I'm going to butcher it, short film Ascension? Yeah, the movie's called Ascension, yeah. Okay. What is the purpose behind that? Because when I think of those kind of films, I think of like the um the ones on Disney and Pixar, the shorts. But yes. like, what's the purpose behind that as opposed to something else? I mean, even a commercial that you mentioned you've done. Yeah. Okay. So when you shoot a short film, when you have a filmmaker who does a short film, it is usually going through the market of wanting to enter a film festival. Uh, festivals are really designed to really get that filmmaker out there and to really bring attention to the talent that is um, on that project. And so, you know, one of our goals is to get into a few film festivals and, you know, the, the awards like the Oscars, for example, if you enter your short film uh, into these major film festivals and start and win those major film festivals, you will get an opportunity to be one of the nominations for an Oscar. Um, before I was even part of One Circle, I did shoot a short film and I did uh, I did attempt the uh, film festival route. I'll admit it didn't get picked up, but it was my first short film I ever did. And I was still trying to figure out how to do things. So mm -hmm. it's definitely a, a way to, as filmmakers, to get yourselves out there. And there's other other platforms you can do that as well, whether it's you can enter sc your script, you can enter a feature, you can enter a short, you can enter for different, different various things. Now, a lot of what I talk about on these ETG sessions, ETG stands for Embrace the Grind. So you just kind of hit on a little bit. You say you entered into um, one of these contests before you didn't really come up too too hot, um, right, right. but you continue to put yourself out there. You're continuing to do this thing. What is it that gives you that drive to what I call ETG, Embrace the Grind and Keep Going? I hear that. Well, so I uh, I like the... I like the uh... Uh, the enunciation of the pronouns and uh, to see like the lettering of what it means acronyms that's what I was there we go <laughs> <laughs> but anyways um yeah no so for me it really started with I, I had a major surgery back in 2015 and I was trying to figure out my life and I think I ended up at a point where I was working multiple jobs and I was working heavily with um, teenagers at my church that I was attending to in Virginia and um, I remembered when it was when Black Panther came out. And so uh, actually, let me rewind before that. I had two friends reach out to me, both who were pursuing acting. And one of them is actually one of my business partners, um, Winston Gant. But my other friend, Deontay White as well, both reached out to me around the same time. This was when I wasn't working. I was recovering from my transplant. And they were like, you should get into film. And I'm thinking to myself, like, why would I do that? Uh, I have had acting experience. I've acted on stage before. Uh, as well as um, I used to, you know, 
be in front of the TV, try and quote movies, things like that, do the action behind it and all that as a kid. I think most of us did that. <laughs> and so uh, so they were asking, they were suggesting that idea to me to go into film. And I remember kind of shaking it off. And then um, I remember getting uh, one of my friends pitched the script to me uh, and asked me if I could help him write it. So I started to help write, write that script while at the same time, my other friend uh, invited me out to be on set with them. And I actually got some uh, roles as extras being on set with them, which was really fun. And I think what was the coolest thing was going to a premiere and seeing your name in the credits and seeing yourself on the big screen in a sense. Now that was, you know, a, a student film. So it was nothing big, you know, nothing a lot of people would have heard of. It was, it was called Hurt, uh, dealt with uh, bullying in the school system. And uh, and then so even with the script, I was writing a script and I, and I had a couple of friends who were screenwriters. So I like showed them a few scenes that I wrote and they were like, this is actually pretty good, but no experience. And I was like, oh, maybe I might be all right at this. And mm -hmm. so, but it was when I went to go see the movie Black Panther. Now, most people uh, specifically, Black people, you know, got excited. We got a superhero in the MCU, royalty, all that. And so it was just an inspiring film. And for me, I had probably had the weirdest response. And I looked at the movie and was like, I could do that. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> now, mad respect to Ryan Coogler and the and the group who who made that movie. Um, you know, I I, I enjoyed the film for sure. But I really looked at it and I was just like, I could, I can do something like that. Like it's not out of my reach. And I don't even know what created that manifestation of an idea for me, but that was what really got me going forward. And so when I started, I, I wrote a script and put it, entered it into a, um, a competition. And it was funny because uh, I didn't want it to go in the competition. My friend who uh, brought me on set and stuff, he mm -hmm. talked me into it. Uh, this was back when I was still in VA. And um, he was like, yeah, man, just enter your script, da, 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 whatever. So I entered the script. Um, and then they were like, yeah, you'll get a call back, da, 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 whatever, by a certain point. And so I go to this um, event where one of the girls who I'd met previously, she works in film up in Virginia. Uh, it was funny. She was she, she pulled me to the side and, uh, you know, because they, they did a screen um, table read. and. Okay of my script and table read is basically like they they'll have a few actors read out your script and whatnot i was late to see my own so uh so i got to see other people read their their own and stuff like that and so and at the time i didn't know if that was a good thing or a bad thing i, I reached out to a few of my actor friends they're like no it's a good thing so she pulls me to the side after a while and she's like yeah your script was uh really good honestly most people when they format it incorrectly we just throw that out of the competition but they really liked your script so much. If you had formatted it correctly, you probably would have won. And okay. I was like, what? This is the first script I ever wrote. First short script I ever wrote. And uh, that was the one I made a movie on. Um, you know, and I got the help from Smith Lee. I'm going to shout out to him too. You said that was about <laughs> bullying? Uh, no, no, no. That was a student film. Mine oh. was about grief. Okay. And it went through the grief process. Um, actually still had, it's on Vimeo. And it's, uh, I got the link on my Instagram, my personal Instagram page. Um, but it it was about grief and the stages of grief. And, you know, for me, it was, they tell you, write what you know. And I thought about that time period where I lost my father uh, to cancer. And so, uh, but I, I did a little different spin to it and whatnot. And so, but it was cool because it was the first project I ever wrote, directed and produced myself. And it was the first time I was like really, enjoying what I was doing you know okay. I think life we we try to figure out what is it we want to do and that was where I was like this is what I want to do for the rest of my life you know but I like it stuff like <laughs> hey so when you talk about that sort of background that sort of passion it's like that's how you are able to you know keep grinding it out because it's like you have no other option this is what you're doing <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Um, and I think back even to our middle school career, um, we did some productions and stuff like thank yeah. you for the, the teacher and the platform to teach us those things. But yeah, uh, I think I'd even done some at my elementary school. But what okay. we did in middle school was a little bit more advanced and it took yeah. some more creativity. And yes. so um, I can definitely see you've taken off with that and taken it to a whole nother level, man. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. I remember we we shot the music videos and I completely forgot about it until your sister actually brought it up uh, when I first met her. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, no. She's like, yeah, I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kept that around just because my video was pretty funny, especially to look back on now. But right. we were young. We put ourselves out there. And, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I that- What's that? that? I, I said I had fun doing it when we shot it. I remember exactly who I shot it with. I shot it with Leah Watkins and Hayden Henderson. Okay. Um, back then, yeah. But no, it was, it was fun. It was fun. And I think about, yeah, it is fun. And there are also obstacles that, you know, day in and day out. Um, what are some of the key obstacles that you're faced with, whether it is, you know, creativity or writing? Okay. Yeah. So I uh, I'm currently working on a graphic novel. And it's funny because I've never written one. And I I know they'll say like, you could sit in front of a computer, a laptop or whatever, and not write anything for hours. And people will think, if you're, if you're not a writer, people will think, oh, you just wasted a few hours. But writers know you can have that writer's block. And that's, it's still productive. And I've found myself struggling with that from time to time about, how do I get this, like, what's in my head correctly on the screen to write and make the sequence make sense? Or how do I get my characters to make certain actions? Now, you, if you want to make an organic story, you, don't, you, you want to know where it's going, but you don't want to force it. You want it to go, you know, organically to where you're trying to get it. Of course. And uh, it can be a struggle where you want your character to be at a certain spot by a certain point of the story. And then it's like, oh, all these little different occasions or events are happening and they're going through these obstacles and I can't get them to that exact spot, you know? And even with uh, filming in general, obstacles you can run into is you got to take technological difficulties. Mm. Um, you know, if your audio isn't cooperating the way you want it, for example, um, you can have, not enough help on on set. And as a producer, I have to think about when we're shooting something, I have to think about the logistics of time because time is money. And Mm -hmm. if I'm paying an actor, for example, or or a DP, a director of photography or cinematographer, or, you know, all these different roles, if I'm paying them a certain amount for a certain amount of time, and then we go over that time, it's like, okay, now I'm costing more. Or you'll use an example of, say, now I've now because I've been doing lower budget uh, films and projects, I haven't necessarily wrestled with this yet uh, with, with that example I just gave or location. But, you know, there will be a time where, say, you want to rent out a building for a scene. And if something goes wrong and you're delayed and you only can be there for a certain amount of time, um, actually, I almost faced this when I did shoot my short film, Grief. We had studio space um, for a certain amount of time. And I remember getting a phone call from the studio. And I haven't really shared this story with too many people. But <laughs> they were like, can you shift your... We, well, no. They said someone called. And they want to know if you can switch your days. Now, at that time, this is before the pandemic. It was 2020, but it was before the pandemic. <clears throat> I was going to be moving out to LA. Uh, I was going to move out there in March. I had the date set up. I had a place where I was going, all that. And so I was shooting this um, this film at the very beginning of March, um, that first week. And so I remember, uh, I was like, okay, I got like two weeks. I gave myself breathing room to move to LA from sh- finishing the film. And when they called me and said, can you move, someone wants to know if you can move your date. I was like, okay, I don't think it's like gonna be plausible. So I was like, let me let me talk to my DP because he had more experience than me. So I, was like, I just need some advice. Mm-hmm. So he was like, you know, if you, uh, you know, stick your ground, stick your ground. So then they, I called back, I was like, I can't move it, this, that, and third, because scheduling is hard. You, you want everybody free for the amount of time you need them for every position on a set that you need. And so getting the scheduling down was very difficult, let alone we all, we we actually shot this in Atlanta. So it's like, we all had to travel because most of Mm. everybody was here. And so I remembered, um, I remember calling him back and then he was like, okay, well, 
they've uh, kind of upped the ante a bit. That's not how he said it, but he was just like, they're willing to pay for your studio time to to move. So I'm like, who am I dealing with? <laughs> Somebody with money, you know, because I'm like, and it, I was like, um, so I, for, I forgot exactly my words, but I just remember thinking like, who who's asking me to move? And, and so they were like, oh, okay. So normally I'm not allowed to share who, but you know, they told me I can't. Cause because he was like, they'll pay for your, they'll pay a little bit of your time or they'll give you tickets or something. I'm like, I don't, I don't know what some fair like. compensation. Yeah. And so I'm like, why would I want tickets to what? And he's like, the Atlanta Falcons are trying to shoot a commercial and you have their space, but you booked it first. So mm. it was like the Falcons are wondering what can they do to get you to shift gears? I'm just like, oh, snap. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like real estate, man. You got some prime land right there. <laughs> right, right. So I'm thinking to myself, like, man, I'm this little, old, you know, filmmaker trying to, you know, shoot his first film. And I'm thinking, like, okay, this is a huge organization I'm very familiar with. You know? <laughs> so I, I go back to my uh, DP for it. Like, Let me give some advice. So I asked him, he's like, He's basically like, who cares who it is? Like, and all of that. So I was like, <laughs> all right, all right. So I, I was like, let's let's compromise. Let's compromise. Why don't we shoot that day? I think they needed it by a certain time to start setting up. And I was only shooting for one day at that spot. So I was like, do you think we could finish early? And he was like, I have faith that everybody that's working, because he had helped me cast some of the people. He was like, I have faith we can get it done early if that's what you want to shoot for. I'm like, sure. So I'll call back. I was like, tell them we're going to try to be out of there by. And I gave him a time. And he was like, that should be reasonable, whatever. I was like, the only thing I asked for is they chip in. So I got to save some money. Mm -hmm. And if I can get a connection to one of their people. Sure. So they were like, sure. So they gave me the, the connection and they paid for some of my time on that set for the production time or location payment, whatever. I, I'm like missing out on the terminology, but yeah. So we shot it. <laughs> yeah, we shot it. We got it done early, uh, actually earlier than we were trying to get it early, uh, get it done. So that was interesting. And, uh, and I used that script that, you know, I had won the, the award or would have won that I used for the competition to film that. Um, film because I remembered when I visited LA in 2019 the whole thing was like oh everybody out here wants to be a filmmaker it's until you make something people will take you seriously okay. and so I was like well I have something lined up to make but it was actually a different project than that project and so they're like oh oh you're serious okay you have something and, yeah. right and so that one never really got finished but when I talked to my uh, business partner Winston about it I was like yeah I'm moving out to LA he was just like Oh, would well, you have a project of a script already finished? I was like, yeah. And so that's what I used, the one I used for that competition. And we shot that one. So, yeah. There's so much in there because I'm over here taking notes. <laughs> a little bit that you mentioned about, first off, the opportunity that was there within that moment of, you know, conflict resolve, resolve that conflict. Yeah. And so yeah. you got a contact that I'm sure is more valuable than you know, any kind of, you know, little money thing that was thrown in there. Yeah. You negotiated that. You look to your mentors and people that you trust in. Yeah. So you didn't make these decisions by yourself. And then right. ultimately you put the, you know, the new statues in place. Right. And all is well <laughs> ends well. So it's like, man, that's a, that's a, a good blueprint on how to problem solve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and and I honestly, like, it wasn't like someone gave me that idea to do. It was, I literally was like, I don't know anything about filmmaking yet. Like, most of the stuff I learned was through YouTube. I taught myself how the, how the process worked. <clears throat> and then I eventually, um, you know, started seeking out people. Uh, but even before I went after this, this, uh, the industry, I reached out to a lot of people in film and was like, is this worth it? Because, you know, I don't want to sell my soul to be quote unquote successful. Sure. And, you know, hearing the feedback that I was getting, it was like, you know what, if I have a story to tell and, you know, you know, I, I, I'm, I, 
I'm a heavy believer in my faith. And so it's like, I do have stories I want to tell and I do want to be able to share what God's done for me throughout my stories. Um, so it, it was really cool to just know that that is possible versus everyone thinking you're in the devil's playground type of gotcha. You know what I mean? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was, I just finished up a book called Outwitting the Devil. Oh. And a lot of that kind of goes into it to where he talks about hypnotic rhythm, getting people in a wow. trance to where you just expect bad, but you're there to kind of <laughs> change the direction of that. But you talked about some of the obstacles, some of the problems that you've had to overcome. Looking yeah. into the future, whether it is, you know, one, two years or even five to six years, like where do you see what you're building right now? Where do you see that growing to? I see it growing to, so you mean individually or as my, like with my company? I would say individually, but I'm sure that's going to, you know, play a big yeah. part into your company as well. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'd like to I'd like to see uh, what I feel like I'm growing into the different things I'm involved in. As you you remembered in middle school, I, I have a lot of interest in a lot of different things. And so I love filmmaking where you can be in anything genre wise, you know, depending on what you decide you want to do. But I've actually started learning about myself and what I want to do when it comes to the entertainment industry. And so you know, my number one goal was to be a film producer, which I still want to do that. Um, directing wasn't necessarily my niche, um, but I do have a little bit of directing experience. Um, even after the graph, um, graphic, no, after Grief, my short film, I was able to help a friend, I co-directed with a friend, for a friend who was uh, doing personal training videos. This was like actually during the pandemic. So we kept it safe. We were outside the whole time, six feet apart, all that. This is in, back in tw summer 2020. Um, but he was trying to help people continue to be exercising and things like that. So it was like a promo video for him. Um, but yeah, so as far, I, I definitely want to be in producing. Um, I, like I said before, I have my graphic novels I'm working on. If they can turn into some type of production, that would be great. If it's a TV show, I'd like to, you know, be a... Um, be a showrunner uh basically it's the person who's in charge of the entire where the story goes and all that um usually you don't become a showrunner on the first go around but mm -hmm. if i can be in the writer's room for that that would be great as well um you know and then i've been starting uh to get into voiceover work so it'd be kind of cool to get into doing voiceover commercials and things like that i work with um i'm a producer with 321 productions as well and they work on branding people. So they'll do promo videos. Uh, they'll do helping out with social media, things like that. Uh, YouTube videos, um, people who have YouTube channels, things like that, just to help them promote themselves in that way. Uh, and then with my company, you know, we, One Circle Films, you know, we want to create features. We have TV shows ideas as well. Um, but, you know, like I said before, we 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 can shoot weddings, we can shoot commercials like golf commercials roofing commercials things like that uh so this is you know I know a lot of people are like wow you got your hands on a lot of too many things but it is doable and I think with the industry and what it allows you to do is the more you you are able to do different things the more valuable you look to sure. say studio and there's definitely studios I'd love to work with you know so with that, it's like, I want to continue to grow, continue to learn. Um, editing is something, I know you were talking about editing. Uh, <laughs> this, so it's like editing I, I'd like to get into as well. And, you know, now I just got a drone, so I want to get into drones. Nice. Uh, so yeah, so, you know, I, I want to be able to do multiple things. So what I see myself in the next five years or so is really to be somebody who can who has talent in different things that people would be, oh, can you say like, someone comes to me and asks me, can you fly a drone for this particular project? Sure, I can do that. Or can you help with uh, writing this particular piece? Sure, I can do that. You know, things like that. But I really want to just be the guy who produces. Uh, that's my number one, you know, goal. But I definitely want to get into voiceover and do that more professionally as well. Okay. Um, I just see that as like increasing your value. Like all yeah. of these things are like things that you 
are going to take on and become great at. And then ultimately yeah. you have lots of different, you know, hats that you can put on and yeah. share with others. Yeah. I mean, one of my goals, I've always wanted to be as a renaissance man and not necessarily just in film, but even in the film world, I'd like to be a renaissance man, you know, mm -hmm. that would be a, a dream come true. <laughs> Yeah, man. So um, you talked about what you're planning to do. Um, is there a way that you have your work out there so, you know, people listening can follow you or check to see what you put out? Yeah, yeah. So you can follow me at K K U Heart um, on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, that's my Facebook page, uh, as well as with One Circle Films. Uh, that's Instagram and Facebook as well. Uh, these are ways to be able to follow me. Uh, one circle has all my one circle stuff. Uh, KU Heart is still growing as a page, trying to figure out what exactly. Um, it's it's new. It's a new page for me, and so I'm trying to showcase my you know life when when I'm doing things, as well as I I post different things that's going on in film. Maybe sometimes mm -hmm. I'm that more sports because I love sports. Um, but yeah. So and then you know my Instagram, I'm working on being more consistent with posting things that that's been trying to figure out okay I need to get better but you know when you're a filmmaker and you need to post your your uh, art um you got to be having consistent art to For be able sure. to post, you know and so it's that is that requires money and so you know we're we're working on it so hopefully soon there'll be more things that you'll see uh post it on that and, and be able to like share with the rest of the world but i say follow one circle films and K kevin ku heart sorry kevin okay. Uhart, um pages yeah i'll put that in the links just regardless so they can access that pretty easily um do thank you for your time man like i said i've never had anyone to speak in this area and i'm sitting here the whole time just like because i'm the <laughs> same way you mentioned that you saw something and you were like i can do that <laughs> I, re I remember back when I was like a uh, young boy and I saw yeah. this uh, thing called the Av Roller. And oh, I was yeah, watching yeah. it on TV and then instantly, as soon as that went off, I went and like got random things around the house and like tried to recreate it. And so oh. I know that mindset of like, you see something, you're like, I can make that. I can do better. And so <laughs> like, I think that's why these are great leadership skills where you go out and innovate yeah. the market, man. So I thank yeah, you for your time yeah. and sharing all of this with us, man. Yeah, no, it's it's been an honor. I appreciate you even reaching out and wanting to hear my story. I, I sometimes feel like I don't have much to say, but uh, I'm grateful for that, grateful for the opportunity. It's, uh, last thing I'll say is it's funny you brought up like looking at something and seeing like I could do better. Yeah. I remember, I think it was seventh grade, we were in gym and you mentioned this uh, to somebody about being able to do a backflip and none <laughs> of us believed you. And then you did it and I was like, I can't do that. And so like, I went at home and tried to do it. I was like, nope, Joe got that. <laughs> you got to believe, man. <laughs> so you you never done a backflip? Not, not unless it's like off the diving board or a trampoline. Okay. Yeah, there was a very small group of us that just love to do flips and stuff. So and you, we all have our strengths and weaknesses, man. <laughs> True. But no, I mean, I literally, so something a lot of people don't know is I did do gymnastics a little bit as a kid and I okay. literally did it so I could learn how to do a backflip and I apparently quit right before they started learning. Uh, <laughs> what I've noticed with backflips is the hardest part is just the mentality, the mindset to go yeah. over. As yeah. soon as you can get rid of that, it's like, you're going to fall, you're going to, you know, get hurt, bang your head around, but you'll right. get better just like with anything else. That makes sense. I've done a front flip. That's the funny part. <laughs> <laughs> There's something about going back, man. <laughs> I think there's less control there. So I was like, I don't want to go to the hospital for this. <laughs> yeah, quite possibly. <laughs> well, yeah, thanks for sharing with us, man. I'll catch you on the next one, okay? Yeah, definitely. Appreciate right, it. Take care. Still got it.